Inventory systems are an incredibly common part of many games. Basically, if your game has any kind of item in it, then you'll probably need some kind of inventory as well. In its most basic form, an inventory can be as simple as a counter that's used to hold coins or lives, while more advanced inventory systems are able to hold multiple unique items, each with their own data that can transfer objects between containers and even drop them into the world. As a result, since there are a lot of different ways that you could build an inventory system, you're going to need to know in advance how you want yours to work, which can be tricky, since creating items that need to exist inside of other containers can sometimes be difficult to visualize. What's more, if you're new to Unity, even relatively basic systems will almost always involve using techniques that are probably going to be new to you, such as plain classes, scriptable objects, and custom data structures. In this video, you'll learn about the different types of inventory system, how they work, and how to choose one for your game. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of classes led by industry experts in design, development, and content creation, making learning a new skill easy to do. For example, I've been using Skillshare to learn how to improve the quality of my videos by learning how to create more complex motion graphics. I've also been exploring some of the game development classes on 3D modeling and shader programming. And if you're interested in trying a class for yourself, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. So, before you can build an inventory system, you're going to need to decide how it's supposed to work. So what are your options? Generally speaking, there are three different types of inventory system. Fixed inventory systems, which are basic variable-based systems that are easy to implement. Slot-based inventories, which assign items to particular positions inside of a container. And dynamic inventories, which work like general storage, are variable in size and can easily be sorted. A fixed inventory in this context is an inventory that contains a limited number of important items that you either have or you don't have. It's coded manually using a class that defines each object individually, allowing you to populate your inventory with basic data such as true or false statements, item capacities, and limited other settings that are all known in advance. Other systems can then check against the inventory by referencing the inventory class. The benefit of this method is that it's simple, relatively extendable, and it makes interacting with the inventory very easy to do which is ideal if you have a small number of item types and all you want to do is check to see if the player has one or not. However, the drawback of this method is it's only really suitable if the possible contents of the inventory are known in advance, since each item is hard-coded into the inventory, meaning that to check against it, add it or use it, you'll need to type out its path explicitly. While it may seem like an oversimplified way of doing things, for a fixed set of items, there's nothing wrong with making an inventory in this way. But if your inventory is in any way dynamic, meaning that you don't know ahead of time what exactly could be in it, then you'll probably want to use a collection to make it instead. There are two common types of collection that you might use to create an inventory container, an array and a list. Generally speaking, arrays are fixed collections meaning that their length is specified in advance, while lists are dynamic collections, meaning that their size is variable and is defined by their contents, which can be sorted, added to, or removed from at runtime. But which should you use? The major difference between arrays and lists, at least in the context of using them to create an item container, is that because arrays are fixed, they can be used to create slot-based inventories. Containers that allow an item to be placed in a particular location in the collection, leaving others empty. Lists don't work like this. Instead, they're more like groups of objects that you can add to, remove from, or sort, and that are defined by what's in them, not what they are. As a result, if you want to create a slot-based inventory, where sections of the container can be specifically empty, you'll need to use an array. Otherwise, if you just want to keep your items together, consider using a list of items instead. But this raises another question. How do you make items? If you're making your first game in Unity, deciding how to define its items can be tricky. 
There are a lot of different ways to do it, and more than likely all of them will involve using techniques that will probably be new to you. What can help is to pin down exactly what kind of item you need in your game and what it needs to be able to do. In its absolute most basic form, an item in a game is a definition of something that you can have and a state of having it or not. In the fixed inventory example earlier, the definition is the name of the boolean variable, while the boolean value itself is the state. However, in most inventory systems, you're more likely to want to use a generic item type, something that can be used interchangeably to allow different kinds of items to be passed around your game in the same way. And there are a bunch of different ways that you can do that. Enums, for example, are named values, basic numbers that have a descriptive label attached to them and that can be used to represent one of a number of possible options. They're useful when a true or false value isn't enough, and while they're more traditionally used to represent settings, they can also be used to define a limited number of items, where the definition of the item is the enum entry, and the state of having it is its selection in a variable slot. If, however, you want to be able to associate more data with an item than just its name, you'll need to use a custom data structure, such as a plain class or a struct. Structs are extremely common in Unity, and basically any data type in the engine that isn't a simple type will typically be a struct. Colors, vector3 values, quaternions, you name it, it's probably a struct, and they are extremely useful for building the data that your game will use, including items. But why a struct? Why not a regular monobehavior script? Monobehavior classes, which are the scripts that you'll add to objects in Unity to give them custom behaviors, are special because they can do exactly that. They can be attached to objects as components, and as a result, will receive event messages like update, fixed update, and start. Monobehaviors are required for building the logic of your game, which happens in your scene and on your objects. But an item doesn't necessarily need to be an in-game object at least not most of the time, since it's usually kept within an inventory or another type of container, meaning that you're more likely to want to define your items as a type of data that can be contained within another class, which is where plain classes and structs come in. But which should you use? Structs are commonly used to create custom value types, and in most cases, if you're creating data that's going to be used as a value, like a vector three or a boolean would be, a struct is usually going to be what you want. However, the important difference between a struct and a class, which on the surface may appear to work in exactly the same way, is that a class is a reference type, meaning that it can be null, while a struct can't be. This affects inventory systems in two ways. Firstly, if you're creating a slot-based inventory and you want some of the slots to be empty, you'll need to use a class. Values can't be null, they can only be their default type, meaning that in the same way that a new boolean is false or a new number is zero, a new struct is not empty, it will be initialized using its default data. Classes on the other hand can be null, meaning that when using a class it's possible to create slots that can be unoccupied, but only if the class is not serialized. Serialized classes, which are classes that are visible in the inspector, are initialized when they're serialized, meaning that they won't be empty. This can be confusing since it gives the impression that structs and classes work in exactly the same way, when really plain class references can be null, just so long as you don't serialize them. This is one of the defining differences between classes and structs, and it has to do with their type, where classes are reference types and structs are values. When a value is assigned to another variable, it's copied, meaning that if the original value changes, the copy doesn't. References, however, are pointers that link to the same object. Assigning one reference to the value of another doesn't copy it, it just creates another link to one allocation of data. This means that if the object changes, those changes are reflected in all of its references. As a result, classes are usually better than structs for creating items, as they allow you to create a unique data instance that can be passed around your game, like an object, but stored entirely within another class, such as in an inventory or another kind of item container. Meaning that so long as you clear one reference when creating another, it's possible to move that item between containers without ever actually creating a real object in the scene, which is useful, unless you want to create a real object in the scene. 
This is where the concept of items in a game can start to get complicated. Is it an object that exists in the world, or is it an entry in a list that represents something the player has, but that you never actually see? At one end of the scale, plane classes are useful because they allow you to create an object that exists inside of another class. It's a representation of an item with its own unique data, but it doesn't actually need to exist. It can be kept in the inventory that holds it. Whereas at the other end of the scale, there's nothing to say that you can't use real objects to represent items in your world where simply turning an object on or off allows you to hide it inside of a container. When using this method, an item is a real object in the world, just like any other, but with an item class attached to it. Adding it to a container hides the object by turning it off and optionally parents the object to the container it's in. While it's not strictly necessary to do this, since the presence of an item in a container is managed by the list of item classes that it keeps, Doing it this way can make an inventory system easier to visualize, since you can see which containers are holding which items. Then when the object is put back into the world, its parent value is set to null, it's removed from the containers list, and the object is activated again. But which method is best? In my opinion, the best way of doing something is usually going to be the way that makes the most sense to you. But as a general rule of thumb, if your items spend most of their time as real objects, consider a game object based inventory, and if your items rarely make an appearance in the game world, consider using data structures to keep track of them inside of other scripts. However, in either case, there is still one more consideration to make when choosing how to manage your game's items. Both methods allow you to create unique item instances, meaning that it's possible to create items that can hold their own data, such as a condition value or ammo. This is information that's specific to that item only, and it may change over time. But while this can be useful, there'll no doubt be information about items that you don't want to change, such as its name or description. For data like this, it's more useful to keep it the same for all objects of that type, and ideally, if you do want to change it, to be able to do it from just one place. For game objects, it's possible to create prefabs that work as object templates, creating copies into the world that then hold their own data. However, for a plain class, it's not possible to create it ahead of time. In fact, because of this, plain classes can be tricky to instantiate in the world at all, since you need to use a constructor, which is a public function that's held in a class and called when a new instance of it is created, to set its initial data. This can be a problem, since not all data is supposed to change such as the basic information that's linked to an item, like its name, its icon, or its description. You could solve this by only creating items in one place, keeping it easier to manage, or by creating item profiles using scriptable objects. Using scriptable objects allows you to create a definition of an abstract item, giving it statistics, its information, and even a visual appearance in the form of a sprite or a linked prefab model. Each item definition relates to a particular type of item, one thing of which there can be one of, or many, in the game's world. But importantly, all of the same types of item share the same item profile, allowing you to show its sprite in a menu, read its description whenever you need to, or instantiate a physical object in the world when you want to drop it, but managing the data the instance uses in one place, the scriptable object it's even possible to make an entire inventory system using just scriptable objects, where the definition of the item is the choice of scriptable object and the state of having it is its presence in an inventory slot. But realistically, you might use a mix of methods to make the system that you want. Keeping the data that doesn't change about an item in one place, the scriptable object, while the information that is specific to an instance of an item, such as its condition, can be kept outside of the scriptable object in the instance itself. Combining the benefit of global item definitions with unique instance specific data. Now I want to hear from you. How are you managing items in your game? Are you using objects, classes, scriptable objects, or a different method? And what have you learned about making items that you know someone else would find helpful? Whatever it is, let me know by leaving a comment, like this video if you found it useful, and get subscribed for more from me. I'll see you next time.